Hello, um, welcome to my talk. I'm uh, Laurent. I work uh, at Zalando. So um, our team is uh, working on um, uh, payment processing and uh, risk management for uh, online payments. Uh, we are detecting fraud in payments and such. So it's uh, very interesting. We have a lot of interesting projects. But uh, today I won't talk about uh, things I do at work, but I will talk about something that I really like to do in my free time and this uh, playing cards. So uh, the name of the game is Bridge. And um, just for curiosity, for a quick survey, can you please raise your hand if you know about this game? OK, there, there, this is more than I expected. Quite a few hands went up. So um, yeah, Bridge is a, a card game. It's a very interesting card game. and. First of all, it's a nice game to play with friends, like a social game with friends or family. This is how I, I usually play it, in a, maybe in a rainy afternoon on weekends and, and such. But um, the game is very uh, complex, so um, very interesting. So uh, people also try to play it very competitively. So it is um, seen also as a kind of intellectual sport similar like chess and go and other intellectual games. So people would um, prepare a lot for, for such competitions and train a lot and practice and uh, some people even do it uh, professionally. And uh, whenever some uh, activity is very challenging and requires a lot of uh, intelligence, then the computers will come and will try to do it as well. And they will try to do it better than us. So uh, we have seen the news recently um, how um, AlphaGo is now much better than humans when Go was considered too hard for computers. And um, in uh, chess, for many years already, this uh, stockfish engine is unbe unbeatable. And now with AlphaGo, zero is even better. And uh, there was a lot of very good results in poker as well, on heads-up poker, where humans are also uh, not as good as computers. And older games like backgammon, checkers, everything. So computers beat us in everything. But in bridge, it's still a bit different. So there are good computer, uh, uh, computer programs, Super Bridge, and they play uh, quite solid, probably better than me but still not better than those guys. So uh, in Bridge, uh, the computers are still not at the human level. So today we'll uh, look into what approaches the computer uh, Bridge programs have and how we can improve on them, of course, with uh, neural networks. So um, just to um, um, set the context, so my main motivation is um, actually to practice some uh, techniques uh, uh, and many different uh, ways and architectures of neural networks. So my uh, goal is not to um, beat um, uh, bridge by myself uh, in my free time. So the outline of the talk, so at, we start with a very short introduction of the game, just one slide, so just enough so you can follow uh, along. Then we look at the most uh, common approaches of how computers play bridge. And uh, we look at how we use uh, neural networks as an uh, evaluation function to, uh, to predict the uh, outcomes in pro uh, bridge uh, positions. And then uh, we uh, look at some thoughts, some, some conclusions. So um, here is a, a diagram with uh, four players. So four players uh, are outlined here. So um, each has 13 cards, so the cards are shown there. Um, and um, then the way a bridge is played is like everybody puts a card in turn. And, and when all four players have put a card on the table, then this is called a trick. And somebody wins this trick. And then next trick and next trick. So there are 13 tricks in total. So you can win maximum of 13 tricks and minimum of zero. So. Uh, here, um, down there in the corner, is shown that Team NS has won three tricks and Team EW has won one trick. So um, what we'll try to do in this uh, talk is to uh, build a neural network that can predict how many tricks will be won by Team NS. Um, so... <clears throat> 
there, there are already uh, uh, algorithms who can solve this perfectly with tree search. So given that you know all the cards, position of all the cards, there are some tree search algorithm, this kind of min-max tree search, that can solve it. Uh, only in the reality, we don't see all the cards. So we see only two hands, and two, half of the cards are hidden. So they're either like that or like that. So we have just uh, partially observed information, and this uh, introduces uncertainty, and this makes it more challenging. So uh, these uh, exact solvers are not so good anymore. So uh, by the way, the uh, term double dummy, it, uh, it uh, refers to the variation where ev all cards are known. So with open cards means double dummy. So um, the most bridge uh, playing program works like this. So they are even the best bridge playing programs today. And this has not changed very much in the last 20 years. There were no big uh, breakthroughs. So the input is such a uh, position where you know only part of the cards. And then for the hidden cards, we just uh, randomly assign some cards there. And when we randomly assign, we have the full position. Then we apply the, the double dummy solver. We get the outcome. And then we repeat this n times. And then we choose the action which was winning in most of the cases. So this seems a very, uh, very like a good strategy, but it has only one problem, that these double dummy solvers are pretty slow. So you can't afford to uh, sample more than 100 uh, positions. Um, so we have an idea how we can do better. So instead of these three, argo three search algorithms, which solve it exactly, we can put a neural network which takes the bridge uh, uh, hand layout and will predict the outcome. So the, what we pay for it is that we don't no longer have the exact outcome, but we have the approximate outcome. So we predict somewhere between 0 and 13 how many, how many tricks the, the north-south uh, team will win. <coughs> So here um, I will um, show you how, uh, how, the, um, um, how, how we represent the, the problem for a neural network. So the input is uh, this, um, um, this hand on the, on the uh, left, and then we have to get to feature vector of dimension 208 on the right. So in the middle is how, how we do this. So uh, we take uh, this hand here, and we will represent it as like here. So we, we take each suit, so here is a spades, here is a hearts, diamond, and clubs. And then we put there all of the cards, from ace, king, down to deuce. So next to all cards, we, we have a zero if uh, this uh, hand doesn't have this card, and the one if it has it. So we can see that here the two of spades is there, and here the king of hearts, king of diamonds, and here two of clubs. So basically this is a binary vector, just showing which cards the, the player has. And this represents one player. And then we have it four times here, because four players, and each player has four suits. So if uh, we we look at the entire thing, we just stack it on top of each other, and then we have a, a feature vector of 208 um, features. And we could directly do a linear regression over it, because we have to predict the number of tricks between 0 and 13. And this, uh, of course, we tried to do that. This is one of our baselines. And um, another baseline is uh, in a a paper published in 2009 by Mosakowski and Manjuk. So um, what we optimize is a squared error because we do regression. And uh, our evaluation metric that we care about is a kind of accuracy. So we measure in how many percent of cases we can predict exactly, in how many cases our prediction is, is uh, off by one trick, and in how many percentage is off by two tricks. So um, our, uh, you can see uh, our um, linear regression approach is not very good. So only in about uh, one third of the cases we can predict exactly the outcome. 
So the, the random baseline would be about 8%, and here we have like 30, 36. So it's still be much better than random, but still not, not very good. And also the, the state of the art neural network at the moment is uh, from this paper. It can predict uh, the exact outcome, let's say, in uh, about half the cases, which is still not, not uh, a lot. So in uh, this paper by Mosakowski and Manjuk, they also made some experiments to measure the human performance, how humans can predict, how well humans can predict the outcomes. So uh, they uh, tried this uh, with uh, 24 players. 10 of them were really good players, experts, and 14 are more amateur players. And uh, these uh, players were asked to solve double dummy problems, and they were solving them depending on how much they wanted to solve, between 27 and 864 somebody solved. So here, uh, here uh, we have the, the result. So the experts ob obviously are better than amateurs, and also they are quite better than, uh, than uh, the state-of-the-art uh, neural network. So here as a bridge player, I, I have to tell you that your, uh, the performance, human performance, usually will depend on how much time you take to solve the task. So if I take one hour to solve this double dummy task, I'm pretty sure I get it perfectly right. But uh, I'm not sure, especially the guy who saw 864 uh, examples, he didn't spend one hour for each, each of them. But uh, the main um, conclusion from this slide is that the humans are better than this neural network. And th there is a, a difference between, so there are always two rows in this table, so this suit and NT. So these are just basically two different uh, versions of the rules. So you can see that the humans are much better at NT, but neural networks are much better at suit. So this is kind of interesting. So um, I have some intuition why this happens, but uh, it's a bit difficult to uh, explain. So in, maybe in the coffee break, we can go into it. So <clears throat> now we want to improve on our linear regression uh, solution, and we also want to improve on the um, state-of-the-art neural network from the literature. So we do this just very simply, you just add more layers, add more hidden units. So we have uh, there one uh, hidden layer of 1,024 uh, neurons, and we put three more of 128. So if we look at the, the um, um, neural network from the literature, this is uh, very similar. So it has also these 208 input features, and then there are two hidden layers that are quite small. So just by adding more, uh, more layers and more neurons, we already outperform the, the state-of-the-art neural network, and also in suit contracts is, is better than what the human experts have done. So um, still, the, the result is not very good, like only 56% we can predict perfectly. So we would like to improve it uh, further. And um, um, the way to improve it, to make it deeper or to make the, the more, hidden, uh, more, uh, more um, hidden units. So if we add more and more uh, layers, then we get into problems with the, the gradients. And if we, get, if we um, increase the number of hidden units, then we get too many parameters, and we will overfit, and we have to, uh, to, will be too slow to train. So here's an idea, because we know that convolutional neural networks are very useful. So how, how could we apply them for bridge? So um, here um, we'll show another representation of the cards. So this... Um, this block, this is one hand. So this represent, uh, represents this hand here, this one. So, so we just put all the cards in the deck there, and we um, uh, put ones where, the, where this uh, player has those cards. So jack of spade and seven of spade, and then queen, jack, eight, and four of hearts, and so on. So this is one. And then there are four... Uh, four channels, let's say, each, each player has its own channel. Um, so um, the dimension of this is 4 times 13 times 4. So uh, 
we, we have uh, convolution filters of uh, one times four times four. So a convolution uh, filter like this, and then it also goes into the depth over the all four channels. So then we just move it to the right and move it, and when we reach the end, then we start with the next line and so on. And when, um, um, when we reach the, the end, then, then we are done. So the, um, maybe one uh, um, weird thing about this convolution is why, why it is kind of like this and not like a square. So the intuition behind this it, uh, it is that if we have a convolution like this one, it will show us the positions of the high cards, in, for instance, in the spade suit. So who has the ace, who has king, queen, and jack, and where, where they are in relation to each other. So intu intuitively, this makes a lot of sense to know in the course of the game how uh, this uh, influences the outcome. So <clears throat> our uh, convolutional uh, neural network architecture is like this. So we start with this uh, 4 times 13 times 4 block, like this one. And then we apply some um, um, uh, convolutional uh, filters, like 32 of them, and we get a bigger block, and then we apply again 64, and we get bigger and bigger. And uh, in the end, we just... Um, um, collapse this into a one um, uh, uh, hidden, hidden layer, and we have a fully connected layer at the end. So this is uh, quite a typical uh, convolutional neural network architecture that's used also in, uh, let's say, in image uh, classification. But um, by, um, um, by today uh, standards, this is pretty small. So we just uh, want to add more stuff to it. So um, one thing which uh, we add is to put a few more layers at the end. So it, we had just one fully connected layers, now we have four. And another thing, we, we uh, add one more way of doing convolution here. So here we have an even longer convolution over the whole suit. So this is just a kind of to show how many cards you have in this suit and how, in what, what combinations they, there are. So on one path, we take this uh, sequentially, this uh, uh, convolutional layers until here, and then we take it also with such a filter, and the two outcomes will just concatenate. And we, uh, we have uh, the uh, further, for, further layers there. So uh, in between, we have the usual suspects like uh, uh, dropout and uh, batch normalization, but we don't use uh, any max pooling. So even going even further, while I was doing this, I, he I heard about the existence of red ResNet and the skip connection, and I thought, okay, why not? We can apply it here as well. So. Uh, uh, then uh, I increased here a bit the number of hidden units from 128 to 512 to make a big bit bigger, and we add also this skip connection here, and then we repeat this block four times. So the idea um, behind doing this is that if we do this, uh, skip connections, it allows you to have more depth. So otherwise, uh, we, we get into these problems with uh, vanishing gradients, but uh, with skip connections can help us there. So indeed, uh, this was our, um, our best version. So um, here, uh, here we uh, stop complicating. So this is uh, our, uh, our best uh, network that we train. So um, now let's look at uh, the prediction accuracy again. So we have um, on the left the, our best network, then the human experts baseline, and um, the um, uh, neural network from the literature. So we notice that uh, we are much better than the, the network from the literature. We are like almost in 70% of the cases we make a perfect prediction. And we are um, almost never off than more by, by more than one trick. And um, the, we are also better than human experts, except in this uh, no Trump setting where the human experts still a bit better. They have a 73% accuracy. 
but uh, they are, uh, the humans also make much larger mistakes sometimes. So they, they have uh, also um, um, errors here like 80, 83% and here we have eight, uh, 97. So, um, so to go back to our original goal, what we wanted to achieve is to to make a uh, solver that is very fast, is approximate but very fast, so we can increase the sample size as much as possible. So now we uh, let's measure how many um, uh, deals uh, the uh, this neural networks can, can process. So the the this is a CNN network, um, the one without the skip connections, it, it can process 1,000 deals per second on, uh, on the laptop uh, without uh, GPU. Uh, the, the one with the skip connection can process 750 deals per second. And the exact solver can only process about seven uh, deals per second. So this means that uh, during the same time of thinking, we can uh, increase the sam sample size by 100 times. Um, and this is important because uh, the time limitation is in uh, when playing a bridge uh, a game is uh, under 10 minutes. So in, in, uh, whenever you make a decision, if you want to make these samples, then you quickly run out of time. You can only think for maybe 10, 20 seconds, maximum 30 seconds. So the, on the downside, our predictions are perfect only in 70% of the cases. And uh, in 30% of the cases, they are off by one trick. So questions that are still open is how much does it help? So OK, we can increase sample size now. So what? So uh, we, we could uh, answer this question by implementing this uh, neural network in an existing bridge playing software that takes these samples and just to increase the sample, see how it works. So unfortunately, this I couldn't do because the bridge playing software, is, none of it is open source and it is very hard to integrate to. But uh, you are welcome if uh, somebody is uh, excited to, to try this out. And uh, the other uh, open question is, how much of a problem is it that our um, uh, solvers are now not exact anymore? So we have this 30% uh, error. So uh, by my intuition, this shouldn't be a big, uh, big problem because anyway, uh, the solver assumes when it solves the position that everybody will play optimally. So in, uh, in reality, we know that this is not the case only because not, nobody sees all cards. So all the optimal strategy is, up, is not known. But uh, it would be interesting to try how this actually uh, affects. So um, the code, the data, and the models are available on GitHub and uh, on S3. So you can uh, check it out if you want. The code, is, uh, the code examples for all, all of this network that I've shown is, uh, are in a TensorFlow. And uh, uh, I also saved there, uh, exported the best performing model. So um, just uh, on the off chance that somebody wants to do some research on Bridge, I will uh, show you how to uh, use this pre-trained model to, uh, to make predictions. So we have to import uh, NumPy and ten TensorFlow, then we, we uh, load this data, which are just uh, NumPy arrays. And uh, we create um, a TensorFlow sessions, a session. Then uh, we import this uh, metagraph and we, we, uh, we uh, load this uh, model. And then uh, from um, <clears throat> this graph, we have to uh, take these tensor names like X and Y. And uh, also this keep prob, this is from the, um, from the dropout that, uh, that we used. And um, then we just run the session for like the prediction and we give it uh, our, our test set and our, uh, our keep probability is always one. So like this uh, you, can, um, you can solve uh, the double, double dummy problems. So... Um, <clears throat> What uh, lessons uh, ha uh, have I learned? So one uh, very important lesson that uh, for me maybe was not obvious when I started with neural networks is that the size of the neural network is very important. So if it doesn't perform well enough, we just make it double, bigger, bigger, it will work. 
However, overfitting was a huge problem. So uh, usually uh, when I do machine learning without neural networks, so there is some overfitting. We are afraid of it, but usually we put some uh, regularization and we are fine. But here it was uh, like a huge problem. All, uh, it was no problem at all to, uh, to uh, predict perfectly on the training set, but on the, test, on the validation set, it was a disaster. So it was, uh, this, uh, I spent a lot of time and uh, with r different regularization um, settings and the dropout worked best. And also doubling, tripling the training data also worked very well. So uh, this, this would be my two lessons here. I just try dropout, I just add 10 times more training data, then it will be better. Uh, another thing which I didn't expect when I started this project is that I feel like I spent 90% of my time tuning hyperparameters. So I just uh, wrote the code for the network and then I try with this parameter like this, like this. And by the time I find the good parameters, I already forgot how I wrote the code. So it's, uh, I totally underestimate how much time I uh, uh, would be spending uh, with tuning. So. Um, yeah, um, another thing I learned is that these convolutions are, are very useful, so uh, I'm not surprised they are so popular uh, because they can uh, help a lot with uh, reducing the parameter size and you can apply it in uh, uh, creative ways, even in uh, places where there are no images. Um, and um, finally, um, um, I discover that the computing resources are, uh, are essential. So if you don't have a GPU, it's uh, not worth even bothering with this because uh, first I tried just uh, training this network on my laptop. I thought, okay, GPU will be faster, but maybe not so much. So this was training for days. And then I just took the cheapest uh, instance from AWS and I put it there and in, in one hour it was done. So from then I could uh, uh, iterate a lot uh, more. So um, yeah, since we have uh, still some time, uh, maybe uh, uh, it's worth mentioning some thoughts for the future. So <clears throat> now we have, uh, we have um, solved the double dummy problem like at the beginning of the game. So when all cards are still there, we can predict what will be the outcome. But as the, the game will progress, some cards will go away because players will have played them. And then I'm pretty sure this network will not work anymore when there are only five cards left or only seven cards left. So uh, uh, one uh, way to solve this would be to train a neural networks at first trick, at second, at so 13 neural networks like this. But also, I think that is a, a, a nice uh, application for uh, sequential uh, models like uh, RNNs because uh, actually the game is very sequential. So you just put the players, put the cards one after the other. So this uh, uh, I haven't tried yet, but uh, maybe I will try it in the future. So um, with uh, this being said, I would like you to thank you for your attention. So if you have uh, any questions now or, uh, or later in the coffee break, or if uh, some of you know how to play bridge, maybe we can, can play a bit in the break. So uh, thanks, thanks, uh, thanks a lot. Thanks uh, for the nice presentation. Um, I have actually two questions. First is, do you remember how big um, the, uh, how, bi how much better the network performed when you were adding the additional uh, fully connecting layers with the um, idea from ResNet, the shortcut? Like, was it very big or was it just like 1% or something improved? You mean between this and this? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so this was one was like uh, almost 70% accuracy and the one before like 65% accuracy. Okay. okay. So it was a rather small, uh, small increase. Uh, but, yeah. 
And um, the straight of stride of your convolutions that you use a stride of four, so above four cards, did you experiment with this parameter as well? Um, yeah. So yeah. yes. So I use a, a stride of one, and I use padding to have the same dimensions ah, af yeah, af yeah. after that. Yeah. So. Um, uh, Maybe you can think of, okay, why not stride of two or three? Yeah. So um, somehow from my intuition as a bridge player, I thought, okay, maybe it doesn't make sense. But uh, of course it doesn't hurt to try. Mm. It only takes few hours to train it again. Mm. But uh, so that's why I didn't try it. Yeah. And the filter size of four, was so, there also an intuition behind or? Yeah, so um, uh, this, uh, Filter size of four would capture all the four high cards, these picture mm -hmm. cards. These picture cards usually mo are the most important. Uh, they have the biggest strength. So that's why I choose four. Mm -hmm. So I think it would work with, with different sizes as well. And even at, at the end here, uh, I added one of uh, size 13, so to capture the whole suit. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. Um, a similar-ish question. Um, did you try varying the layer of the, the convolution step of the input just to try and work out if having convolution at all as opposed to any particular layout was the important factor? So um, you mean between this and, and uh, this one, right? Yeah, so you added, you, you took the intuition that you should use the <coughs> uh, convolution layout but the question is, is just having any convolution layout good enough to, to make it perform, or does it need to have the one you chose? So uh, when I wasn't using convolution layer, so I was using basically this architecture, and I experimented there a bit with different number of layers and bigger layers and so on. So uh, I, I um, struggled quite a lot to improve on this performance. So I think it's possible if I use bigger layers, but uh, I didn't have uh, computational resources uh, to, to, to really do it. But uh, then when I tried convolutional layer, I, suddenly I could do more, uh, go more in, in depth and um, apply more of them. So there, there were uh, much fewer parameters to train. So I could make progress uh, a lot faster there. So I was reaching uh, immediately like 60% accuracy, and then I was uh, trying to add more and more stuff until 70%. Yeah. But here uh, I could barely move uh, above 55%. Yeah. So, so my question was more, um, so you chose a particular, in your convolutions uh, yeah. uh, layout, you chose a particular layout having particular cars next to each other in the layout, and you chose that manually. So what I'm getting at is that is having convolution uh, at all uh, the important factor as opposed to your particular layout of how you map the problem to the convolution input. Okay, okay, I see. Yeah. So the, the, your question is whether the convolution itself or this exact this convolution. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So yeah, I don't know how to answer this. So I, I think uh, that it's uh, the convolution, having convolution at all. So I think even we increase this a bit there to four or five and make it wider, it would still work. So this was just uh, how I thought, okay, maybe this makes sense, yeah. Thanks again. Uh, did you try um, removing one of the input layers because it's rather um, redundant? Because when you have the information of three players, you know the cards of the last player? Um, no, I didn't try that. So. Um, yeah, I, th I thought, okay, it's the simplest if I just put everything there. So in this uh, paper that uh, I was mentioning in the talk, so uh, there uh, the authors were, were um, comparing many different ways of how to represent. So maybe also this idea that you mentioned was inside, I'm not sure. Uh, so in the end, they found out that this was working best for them. So I thought, okay, it makes sense. I will just uh, use this, uh, this input representation. Okay, thanks. And um, regarding the convolution filters, did you um, filter across players? Did, did you do convolutions across pl the players' cards? Yes, yes. So, so here uh, you see there are these four um, 
uh, channels, one behind the other. So each channel represents one player. So this uh, filter also has dimension four. So it will, uh, you would kind of see um, uh, between players like that. Um, how big was your training data set? So my training data set uh, originally was uh, one million uh, hands. So I uh, uh, created the training data from scratch with this solver. You know, so I uh, just uh, put s some random uh, hand solved with this solver, and then I have one training example. So this uh, ran for quite a lot of time, but then I, cr I created one million, so I, I started doing it. And then um, in the middle of the project, when I saw that, okay, I'm running a bit of overfitting and everything, so then I created a few more million uh, such uh, training examples. And that helped a lot, so it was good to, to have more data. Uh, does it make sense? Well, my, my knowledge of bridge is very limited, but um, uh, intuitively it sounds like uh, this NT and sweet different uh, things are, have different structures, so does it make sense to train a different um, architecture on it, especially maybe having a convolution which goes across the suites? So, uh, yes, so actually uh, there are different networks. So one network is trained just for suit and one network is tra trained for no trump. And also in, um, in the, the last layer here, this one, so there we actually use a different kind of convolution which uh, looks uh, like a square, four by four by, f by four. So, but that we use only uh, deeper in the deeper layers in the network. So, yeah, maybe I should have mentioned that also. More questions? Okay, so in this problem it looks like that all the dimensions are kind of different. So, like they are uh, separ separate. Like in pictures when they are kind of combined, but here each dimension represents something different. So, so did you try, uh, by chance, some separable convolutions? Did some what? Separable convolutions. So in the sense that you go only by one channel. Uh, things like that, just go one by one. Aha, uh -huh, just by one channel. Yes, so for example, like, now it's like only for, uh, only uh, that mm. way without mixing uh, players. Or like only play yeah. only players without mixing channels, or like only yeah. suits without mixing other things. So I didn't try, but I think that this um, here it was tried. So so if you look at this one here, so you know you will notice that uh, the the um, hidden layer is like not full. So this is one player, and then hidden layer is here fully connected, but just for this player. And then the next one also just for this player. So the players kind of don't mix with each other at this layer here. So this is a, a bit... Uh, 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 well, if uh, they're the same weight, yes. If not, then something, something yeah. different. So, uh, yeah, so the answer is I, I, don't, I didn't try that. So uh, uh, intuitively I thought that it makes sense also to see what other player, what cards other players have, because they will play this card on top of my card, so it would be important. But uh, yeah, of course it's uh, interesting to try out this idea as well, so uh, I didn't try it. I th so here that this didn't work so well, so I thought, okay, let's uh, just use... Um, uh, similar li like in images to to use uh, this uh, on on all channels. Okay, so thank you. Any more questions? All right, then let's uh, thank the speaker again.